Hey guys, what's up? It's Jules and, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we wanted to do a more specific Q&A. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is a large part of our life that we don't talk about as much, not for like any bad reasons or honestly not for any reason at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like it comes and goes through waves, but we wanted to do a specific Q&A surrounding us being an LGBTQ plus couple. So yeah, we told you guys to ask us literally anything you wanted. Not all questions are gonna have to do with this. That's really what it is. I mean, Julia <laughs> can't talk. That's really but... what it is. I feel like we've only done one Q&A like this a year ago, I think. Yeah. And it was during Pride Month and we were talking about our coming out stories. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I feel like we don't talk about this enough. So here we are. On top of it, I do wanna do a video in the future where you guys and Julia reacts to pre-tea. Now that I'm on testosterone, if you guys wanna see a pre-tea like saw or like long hair, girly looking sod, comment below. If this video gets 5,000 likes, okay. then we'll do that. If okay? this video gets 5,000 likes. If it gets 5,000 likes. likes and you guys are commenting, you guys want to see that. Cause now I feel like we're able to see an actual change. Yeah. And like my voice, how I look, all of that stuff. But with that being said, make sure you guys add us on Snapchat. We are both going to be doing gift card giveaways. Once we hit 600K, we both hit 500K. So high five. Did you want to start with questions or do you want me to? I have a couple screenshots okay. in. So we can start with me first. Okay, you can start. And I will say, a lot of these questions are very good. Some of them are kind of wild, but like we're here for it, yeah. right? We're Transparency. Here for it. Yes. So, this is a good one. Before tea, did you and Julia ever get looks from people if you guys were holding hands or anything? Do you think so? Okay, this is the thing. I am Julia not doesn't. good She's with oblivious. my surroundings. I'm very oblivious to things. Right. Like, even when we're out and there are fans that know us, I literally don't realize until they come up to me, but yeah. Saad will like spot like, oh, this person knows us. So, I would say, yeah. Um, even like to this day, I feel like we don't hold hands as much just because I felt uncomfortable holding hands with you. Like you're, you're me. comfortable. I never cared. You're fine. You're chilling. But I would say like, not really. I'm sure we don't get as many looks now as we did before, if we did at all. But honestly, I feel like, I'm always in my own world. I was going to say, I feel like in Massachusetts where we are, like, I don't think people would look at us like depending on what state you are in or what town you're in or whatever like yeah it just all matters like that somebody asked why did i transition at the time i did honestly i would have transitioned earlier in my life because i transitioned at 26 so i would have transitioned earlier but i felt like my family was like gonna shut me down completely and like i wasn't gonna have anyone i was gonna lose everyone and the reason why i waited so long is just because of that and then as soon as i started it was because i got lyme disease and then i was like damn i could have died so like I gotta live this life for me type of situation. He was very very nervous for the longest time I literally still remember to this day. It was our five-year anniversary. <laughs> our five-year anniversary got ruined like we Whoops. Got like the most expensive hotel room in this hotel. It was so crazy I was so excited and Saad was just so upset and like in such an off mood And I didn't know why and it just for some reason that day it hit him and he was like I don't want to live like this anymore. Like I I can't hold this in. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like that's when everything really yeah. unraveled. Unraveled. Okay, this is a, I'm gonna let you answer this one. I'm petting Pudge, by the way, in case you're wondering like- How, how is the room status? It's, it's good. It's really good. So the room status before <laughs> was like- Was non-existent. Very was, non-existent. This is like you had a, you had a vacuum it cause dust would be collected. Yeah, you yeah. Know, dust like, would be building up. It would be uh, And honestly, personally, like full transparency became a concern for me at one point because I was like, okay, like in my opinion, this is a very important aspect of a relationship. Mm -hmm. We've been dating for like five years and we don't have this aspect of a relationship. Like, don't get me wrong, like once in a blue moon, like I would get a little something, something, but like <laughs> it was still very rare. And yeah. I understood like him being uncomfortable. And yeah. I think you can back me up. I always respected that. Yeah. But like my needs were not being fulfilled. Um. Okay, Jocelyn. But. Things definitely have changed. If you don't get it, you don't get it. The song. It's the opposite. And now, if anything, this man is ready to go every night and I'm not. Okay, like, okay. I'm, I'm, okay, okay. We answered it. We answered it. How did Julia react and support your changes knowing T rages and sweating, etc.? Will she be telling me I stink? Oh, uh, first off, no. Yesterday, rewind. You, every, every, 
wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah, rewind. I was on FaceTime with her. He woke me up bullying me. He was literally bullying me. He was being so mean to me. He was holding on to my forever bracelet and he was like, you're not leaving the bed. I say so. Putting me in an anaconda hold, like move and it gets tighter. I'm like, bro, okay, just a stupid boyfriend bullying. Okay, listen. So I finally said one mean thing because he kept saying stuff. So I was like, you stink. But you and that know one something? hit him so deep. You want to know something? Because it has been a concern because. Okay, holy, you shouldn't have bullied me all the Because holy shit, the way you smell after taking testosterone, you're going to sweat. I didn't sweat before. Now I sweat. I didn't stink before. Now I stink. If you're going to dish it out, you have to be able to receive listen, it Listen, but the thing was, the, the, listen, the night of this happening, the night before, I was like, do you care if I don't take a shower? And I said, no, it's fine. I, <laughs> so I, don't I, tell me I no, smell no, like no, shit no, 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 no. The, the only day. reason I told you once again that you smelled like shit is because you were bullying <laughs> then, me. So it's and like, and then I was bro, on FaceTime with her. I was on FaceTime with her earlier in the day. She was wiping herself with the towel I used, and she's like, oh my god, this was your towel? <laughs> 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 okay, well, I'm that's like, because I oh literally rubbed his like <laughs> armpit sweat towel all over my face. You would have done the same. You would have done the same. <laughs> okay, would you stop being friends with someone if they did not agree with you? Wait, I feel like I didn't even answer the previous question. Oh, okay. How did Julia, but Saad kept speaking, <laughs> how did Julia, I have supported your changes, I have supported the tea rage, and I have supported the sweating. Okay, I yes. have. He tries to make me touch his sweat. I don't like that. The tea rage honestly hasn't been that bad. I feel like, I feel it, like it comes was at and first. goes and rages. And at first, it was a little hard for me to adapt to because I don't do well with anger. Um, I'm a person that like, if I feel something, it's either happiness or sadness. It's rarely anger. So if someone's angry, I really don't know how to like deal with that. So I, I struggled a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Cause I was like, why are you so On top mean? of it though, my I just got my blood taken a couple days ago because last time I got my blood taken, my T range was abnormally high. Yeah. So if you are on testosterone or you're thinking about getting on testosterone, just know you need to get your blood taken. Like every three months or every six months, whatever it is, you need to get your blood taken because your uh, testosterone levels can switch up and turn into estrogen. And I think I, for the first, like, I'd say like three months in is when I had like TRH. Yeah. Three, four months. And I was working on how to deal with it. So I'm waiting for the results because I might have to go down on my Tito's. A lot of people ask what my Tito's is. It's 3.5. It was just like three, but then I went up because I was like, I feel like I'm not seeing changes. And now it's, my levels are kind of high. So As a partner, it's just all about being supportive, patient, and just mm. honestly, you just deal with people through their best and their worst times. Yeah. Like that's all part of a relationship. Would you stop being friends with someone if they did not agree with you? Yeah. Yeah, if they 100%. wasn't. I mean, if they didn't like that I was trans, like, why are we friends? Yeah. Like, why do you just, even want to be a part of my that's life? That's like the people like, no, like, I support you, but like, you're going to the hell. hell. Yeah. Like, like, like no, it's you like, don't. It's like, come on. Like, for real. Like, no, then you obviously don't. Yeah. Like, it's just like, that doesn't make sense, personally. I so, agree. Um, does Julia miss eggplant? No. <laughs> if Julia wants so, she can have so. Oh my god! I'm just saying, like... Okay, let me... No. Okay, this oh is the thing. Oh my god. I don't miss that. No, I don't. And a big reason for me personally leads into my next question. Okay, Which shit. is, when you became pansexual, how did it all start? So, well, being pansexual personally, I just don't care. Like, I, I don't care what the body part is. I honestly don't have a preference i'm fine with either so it's not like i need one or i need the other it's not like i'm fiending for the other if i don't have the one i just fall in love with people for who they are so how it all started was honestly like i grew up in kentucky so i wasn't surrounded by like diversity like i didn't know what any other sexuality was um i remember like being a little girl and like things were like a little different for me which i won't go like too much into detail with but i kind of just like looked the other way and then honestly when i started becoming attracted to sod i was Ooh. like okay like i don't care like what you are like it just felt normal to me it didn't feel weird i panicked and i thought i was going to hell <laughs> because <laughs> i grew up in a catholic church that's and true. i was surrounded by religion i feel like that's one of the first things that like a lot of people coming out like have to deal with is like if you did grow up with it put in your face you're like it, holy shit i'm going to hell yeah like that's what you think yeah now i'm like that was so stupid and I hate that like younger Julia had to fear that. I think it's just something that's always been in 
in me, but it really came out through sod because then I understood because we started as, it's so weird to say, we started as a lesbian relationship. Yeah, and it's not, not anything no, it's against not, it's, lesbian no, relationships. Not, it's just like, me personally. Part, it's just weird, yeah, it's weird saying <laughs> it's, it's because me. of sod. It's not um, y'all, it's me. No, it's not, I was, I was with y'all for like, we were. literally like, no, like I was, I was gay for since like 2013 till 2017 we started dating 2016? we started dating in 2016 so no but i'm saying because uh, i remember we were a lesbian couple yeah but for, you came out very early so i would say 2017 from 2013 to 2017 yeah, 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 yeah. so we started like out as a lesbian relationship yeah. and then Saad came out to me secretly so then i kind of knew like okay it was it was different but i came out to you before i came out to like anyone else and like yeah. julia already thought i was a boy and then I thought I was bi because I didn't know what pansexual was. So I was like, okay, I'm bi. But then pansexual made way more sense mm -hmm. for me. I was like, yeah, okay. Because it's not like I have a preference. It's not like, and I just like fell in love with you for who you are. And like, if you detransition today, which you're not, I wouldn't care. So Pretty I sure. don't miss eggplant. She don't miss it. If she wanted it, I don't she need it. <laughs> I'm chilling. Okay. Are you considered straight if you're trans or how is that considered? Um, also people, wait, and then there was another question that was kind of on the same line, so I'm just gonna like say the other one too. If you are a man, does that make your relationship heterosexual? Is Julia straight? So, Julia just explained. So basically. for that part, you can be in a relationship with someone that is trans and you can be in a straight relationship. You can't. Because me personally, my preference, I'm straight. I'm like, not. So like that's, not. that's where it's different and that's where I just... I, I don't know what to classify our relationship. Like that's where I, I got say, confused. See, so I just said I, LGBT. Like, that's why I'd say we're a queer couple. That's what I'm saying. Are we a queer couple? But like, I don't know the exact definition. We're both a part of the LGBT community. So are we? I think so. But I don't, I don't know. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't want to get I don't, terms wrong and yeah, offend anybody. Cause at the same time. We're both time. a part of the LGBT community, but sexuality wise, Sod is straight mm -hmm. and I'm not, so. Yeah. Do you guys argue a lot behind camera, someone said? No. I'd say we don't. really don't. We really, like, actually don't. Did you ever deny yourself? Or did I? I did. I never did. I did. I know, honey. You denied yourself for a long time. <laughs> I've been denying we myself. We started our YouTube channel not using pronouns at all. If you guys are here from the very beginning, you'll remember. I only said sod. I never said he. I never said she. They. It was no, it was sod. more they, them. Honestly. No, it was straight up sod. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying like if you was to say something. It was it, probably it more was they. probably they yeah. or them I or something like that. I never used pronouns. But yeah, we just never used it. Like I said, because like family and stuff like that, even to this day, like I did get some questions saying on both ends does our family support and i would say yeah for the most part but in some other like depends on who it is my family supports okay shit on mine your family no, does, your family I, does they support. support but it's just like i think i'm just uncomfortable it's because you uncomfortable. i feel like like and i we're was talking, waiting we're, we're talking distant family because obviously laurie yeah no no antonio like support. laurie antonio like my dad like my cousins like I'm they all like we're all chilling i know that my immediate family no supports. same i ain't concerned immediate. if my cousins my aunts no no, no, my no i'm uncles, saying immediate family care. like we're good but i'm saying like on the other side it's i don't just care like, i don't know yeah but in my head for the longest time Time. I thought I was he going to cares. get I thought I was gonna get like taken captive and then like pour holy water on me See, so, like, I thought it was going to be that bad the thing is that I hate that I wish I could take away from him is he still has fear in him yeah I, do. I, I it I depends so bad and I hate that you worry about what other people think well it's not like like people online it's not the people online it's like my like private life yeah Why? I know and it's only like two people I know <laughs> but, it's, but like, it's like it's like I don't really care what somebody says on social media about me like people well, if you comment, family if you comment, oh, you're you're a girl, blah blah blah. I'm, I'm like, okay, whatever. It really isn't that serious. Like, I'm not listening to that. But if other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Okay. So people are asking, uh, when are you gonna start trying for kids? And how are you doing with your health and your family? What's happening with the baby? Okay. So we. we oh. 
I was gonna say, we don't want a baby anytime soon, mm -hmm. personally. Sod's eggs are already frozen. We already I'm, got the babies in the bag. I'm gonna be doing egg retrieval, but I get to push it off a little longer, so I'm not in a rush with that. <laughs> I also, I feel like I'm always doing something for my health. Um, I found out that I have late stage, late stage fatigue. adrenal fatigue. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 I forgot what it was called. Mm. So right now, my cortisol levels, I have a flipped cortisol curve, so my energy Energy levels are all messed up. Basically, it's nothing serious. It's just I'm. Very, we're just getting that. I'm very situated. tired and fatigued throughout the day. So we're just trying to get my health to like its peak. So I'm trying to and then get that the out. eggs when they're healthy and right. Exactly. Um, so but I'm we, trying to see it off. We did just well. I just seen this thing on TikTok. Instead of IVF, it's called IVG. And hopefully, in the next couple of years, when we do try to you know have a baby and stuff, this process will be easier, where you're able to take DNA from both parents. This is for the LGBT couples out there, the trans couples, the lesbian, the couples, the gay couple, every everybody in the LGBT, where it's still in the process of like working and like how it's gonna work and stuff like that where we could have both of our DNA. Yeah. Like basically I guess they'll like they take, take my a, hair and or just like a swab a of you. Like a, so I don't know. Like and that's I don't another know. reason I want to wait because technology is crazy and like I don't even know it's gonna be a thing in a couple years. Yeah. And if there's any chance we can have a kid as genetically close to us as possible, I Which, would love that. If we can't, it's fine. Like we've even talked about adopting before. So it's just like we're it, just not ready. We're just not ready and it's like it's not something we need to talk about right now because like you know we have other things before we do that so yeah we're chilling this is interesting this is very different people are asking if we believe in God and what's our religion hmm that's very different. That's something we don't talk about. Um, yeah, nah, I don't talk about that. I don't talk about religion, I feel like. I believe in God. I think the reason that I don't talk about it or like, honestly, if anything, I feel like that I've been straight away a little bit more and this might be controversial is because of the people that rep it so hard. Like, mm -hmm. and not everybody, not everybody. It's that the, the people in my personal life that I have seen turn one 180 into like Jesus, like 101. Like, Which it's fine, you know, Jesus love fine. Jesus, but they're terrible people. And wait, what? The people that I know personally. Oh, I thought you said, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. The people wait. that I have seen oh, turn okay, okay, are okay. not good people, and that's fine. Like, you're finding Jesus, blah, 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 whatever. But you know what? I don't like hate. when they find Jesus and then act like they didn't do anything wrong no, and then they shit on no, me. No, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what That's I don't what I'm like. That's what I'm trying to say is I think what pushes people away and what yeah. has even like pushed me away, like I said, like I have my own relationship with that. Like that's my own thing. I'm, I don't need to like, I don't know. Right. People are like, oh, I love God. I'm going to heaven. But like the fags are going to hell. Like. Huh? Like that's literally what they will say. And I'm like, pers like that pushes me away from yeah, the idea I agree. of it. I agree. That, that pushes like any like, which I say what you will say. I need to be saved. That's another thing being told I need to be saved like how do you know I'm not saved like you know how many times I've heard that like I didn't grow up in a church I, feel I like literally grew up in a church being like, an LGBT couple like getting shit on by people non-stop you're not pulling people into religion anymore you're pushing us away mm -hmm. because you're spreading hate and I would like to think that God is a loving God like I was taught not yeah. hateful yeah. so it personally pushes me away I believe yeah. in God but it's definitely been pushed away seeing all these evil people I know acting like they are the holiest most amazing people when I know they have done so many dirty things and God will forgive them whatever they just spread hate like I grew up a Christian like my uncle's literally a pastor and like I've been through the mud in the church and the sad thing is I'm sure a lot of LGBT I've people left, watching this are I've been positions. through the ringer from people that like preach about the Bible and you know do what you do and like yeah like, I don't know. I, I just, exactly what you said is how I feel because when I came out as gay, oh my gosh, I was so scared. Like, because of 
people that like I knew that like love God and it's like okay love God but like damn you don't gotta hate me like you're scaring us you're making like, us scared yeah you, you scare people into not coming out that's like a big reason why I did not come out for a very long time well you make people scared of God yeah and then you're scared you, of the and idea then, and then it and then turns then you, you away it. yeah and then it turns you away and then it makes you think wait if God hates me why should I love him why should I try just it makes like a lot of LGBT couples or just people in general just spiral yeah. and it, it makes you think about a lot of stuff oh. and like I I, I do appreciate when I do see like straight up like a pride flag outside of a church yeah. like straight up 100 I'm like, okay, like this church Me is too. loving and accepting and accepting not every church has to have a flag that, I'm just saying but when I do see it I'm just like, okay, like this is this is cool Like if I wanted to go to church like I can go here and not feel judged yeah. and I'll feel like I'm gonna get attacked at any second yeah. So. so personally, it's like believing yes. Like, am I going to church? No, I'm not really like super religious. But like I said, I feel like it's because if anything, I've been pushed away from it more. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone said, why are you gluten-free and can you tell a difference? I became gluten-free after getting diagnosed with my autoimmune disorder because I was told by a lot of people in the community that gluten causes a lot of thyroid problems and that your body attacks gluten thinking it's like a foreign object. Now, my endocrinologist was like, no, you can eat gluten, you can eat gluten. But that's the thing, like these doctors will tell you you can, but if you go to a functional medicine doctor, they will tell you like, no, it will tell you to cut out gluten. So I did a lot of research on my own because when I was first diagnosed, I felt like no one was helping me. I felt like no doctor was helping me, listening to me. And everywhere I saw cut out gluten. And I thought, oh my God, this is gonna be the hardest thing in the world. I've ate gluten my whole life. What is gluten in? How am I gonna know what's gluten? gluten-free. What am I going to be able to eat? I remember crying because I felt like I couldn't eat anything. Mm -hmm. It was so hard in the beginning going gluten-free, but ultimately going gluten-free is what healed me. Like it is crazy, but there is so much stuff put in our food in the U.S. in general, but put into wheat, flour, gluten, all of that. It is so different. People with celiac disease can go to Europe and eat bread, but you can't eat it in America. So for me- That's not funny. I was just like, you're talking about bread. This is about LGBT stuff. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Like that <laughs> no, wasn't, that was sorry. This time. one, no, this one wasn't related. I'm so sorry. So I just like, <laughs> was... no, this one wasn't oh, related man. to LGBT. I, just <laughs> I was just like, wait, how do we get I, here? Wait, wait, to, from religion to gluten. Okay, yeah. I wanted to address this because okay. People okay. will comment on our videos, like the drive-thru videos, saying that it's an excuse for me. No, I really can't eat gluten. I will look pregnant. I will be so sick. <laughs> I my, my digestion will be so messed up, and I will feel like I am hungover the next day. So I'm not allergic to it, but I have a very, very, very strong intolerance that developed around the time of my autoimmune disease. So that's why I avoid it. I just wanted to address that. <laughs> Okay, this is a longer one and it's mostly for me. Okay. Um, where did you get your top surgery and how much was it? Also, how was the process of getting top surgery? Is there like steps you need to take? I have never talked about on YouTube how much my top surgery was because I feel like if I said it, like people would be like, not mad, but like I don't even know why. I, I don't just, know. I think you I've can always say it. I've always I've always never it. said it because I don't know. Okay, so where did I get my top surgery? I got a Beverly Hills, California. Oh, stretch in. Um, Dr. Dad Van is uh who did my surgery and actually fun fact, Julia found him on Instagram. I did. That is how we found my top surgery. And as far as the price, it was in total twelve thousand dollars. Um, which is a lot and I did pay out Ooh. of pocket for that just because Ooh. he is um He's like a solo, right? Like what is the word? Isn't he? He's like his own thing. He's, he's his, his own, own practice. practice, right? So he's his own practice and I don't think he was taking insurance I don't think your insurance would have even covered and, it. Yeah, I don't think my insurance would have even covered it. Was it was an investment on your body. Oh, it's made me literally 100% like more comfortable in my body and just so much happier in general. But um, yeah, it was really expensive because when you do think about top surgery, it's usually from like 4,000, 6,000 to like on the higher scale to even up to $15,000. So um, I did pay out of pocket for that, but it was 100% worth it for me. And as far as the process, it was very easy, very fast. He booked me very fast. Yeah, I was very surprised. He was like, okay, I'll see you in a month. 
Okay, with a lot of top surgery places, you need to see a therapist for three months. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to see a therapist for three months. Like, I know I want this. Like, I've, I'm 24 at the time. Yeah, I think so. I think I was, I was probably about 24 at the time. And I was like, I know I want this. And he was like, and I was like, okay, do I have to go through, like, do I have to give you, like, a note, a paper? He said no. So I was like, awesome. And he just made me feel comfortable. Like, the people at his front desk made me feel comfortable. They gave me their number. Like, they were checking on me constantly. And we stayed in LA for about, like, a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah. So, the whole process was just very smooth, very easy with him. And I didn't really need to take steps to, like, prepare for it. Because, like, okay. he just, he was just so good. He was just so good. Yeah, I wanted to make sure, because I'm like the researcher, I wanted to make sure that I found a surgeon that really specialized in F to M top surgery mm -hmm. and that was passionate about it. And that's why he when was I found perfect, him, I was right? like, oh, this is perfect. Because he is so, like all over his Instagram, you could tell how passionate he is yes. about that specific surgery and changing people's lives. Right. And he vocalized that to us when we met him. What is the hardest part of being a part of the LGBTQ plus community? I would just say the hate. the hate and the discrimination and yeah, the, the hate people are just so hateful Yeah, I would 100% the hate is probably the most like uncomfortable For Saad before top surgery. Did you ever feel weird in a public bathroom? I've experienced a lot of dysphoria with it. How do you deal with it? Let me tell you something So when we was at Universal or like Disney like public places like that even like going to a restaurant I am nervous in general, but now that I am passing I'm like I have to go into the men's bathroom Like there's no room for me to go in the women's like I I don't want to go in the women's But at any chance that I could find a family bathroom or like a gender neutral bathroom I, people sometimes have problems with gender neutral bathrooms and like that's for a whole different conversation but like when I see those bathrooms I'm like thank you oh my god like I am so excited when he I will see not those. drink when he's out in public, I don't drink so as bad it. as it is I won't drink any water any fluids or anything like that but what was the question because now I'm I'm losing my mind so I would like to say yeah it is weird and how I deal with it I barely do in all reality I'm literally dreading when I have to pee like I try to go to the furthest one away from like all the other bathrooms and like I try to just be fast as possible that's that's literally it as bad as it is just something I'm just looking for a family bathroom yeah <laughs> like as bad as it is but I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with the idea of it now than I was before because like that person did say dysphoria is one hell of a thing one hell of a thing yeah anyway i hope you guys feel a little closer to us um i feel like this was a very very personal mm -hmm. and vulnerable q a yeah I agree. um and i hope that maybe you know for any lgbt people especially the youth watching i hope that we can help in some way shape or form as always we have our little duckling pudge right below us so if you hear the noise that's him we love you guys so much thank you for the constant love and support uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys mm -hmm. and if you guys want to see any like certain types of videos on this channel we're always open to the idea of new stuff so let us comment know. below with that being said we, we love, love you guys, guys. we'll see you later and stay, stay everyone, everyone.